A warm welcome to together for worship on this, the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany. Just a couple of things. One, there is one last date left on the flower chart, August 28th of 2022. If you fill that, you'll make Elizabeth really happy, and we'll take that announcement out of the bulletin. So we're way ahead of the game. So thank you very much for all that uh, support. So through a circuitous path, we received a surplus of curtains that were sold, brought back, and couldn't be distributed, but they're all brand new. So if you know anyone who's in a position where they might need some curtains to hang up in their house, um, college students, for example, um, they're back in the fellowship hall, so find your way back there. There is no system to them, okay? <laughs> this is more like an Aldi's or an Ali approach or Big Lots. This is not pennies, okay? This is a, sort of in boxes. Take a look, um, help yourself, get them to other people. Eventually, what we want to do is get them down to Detroit and get them involved in the Samaritas project where they can be distributed to people actually looking for a new home and curtains. You guys are looking for a new home. Maybe you need some curtains. I don't know. <laughs> she looks and says, no, no, please don't. So anyway, all right, I think that's it. Let's rise and begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let justice flow like streams of luckling water. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We're even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. It is for this life only we have hoped in Christ. We are of all people most to be pitied. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place 
with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. I think it was in sixth grade when I was introduced to Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. I don't know why that was part of the sixth grade curriculum. It just was they told us we had to memorize the poem. And that poem sort of resonated with me even as a sixth grader, which was a long time ago. And when I was able to give the graduation speech at my high school, I used The Road Not Taken. It's a perfect thing, right? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and for graduation students standing out there, all of us ready to go our separate paths. And you know, he always says the road not taken is the really good one, the, the one left behind, but then the, 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 the one that no one else is taking is the one you should follow, right? It's a path question, a pondering question. And it's perfect at graduation time, right? Because you're making choices which way you're going to go, what decisions are you going to make? The ponderer stands there wondering knowing that whatever road is chosen will determine a future. Once you go down this road, you, you really can't come back and take the other road. You can't go for a while and say, oh, I think I'll go back, because the moment is past. The moment is past. When you stand there, Yogi Berra said, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. Right? You have to make a decision. Otherwise, you just end up standing at the fork in the road forever. All of us have found those moments when we've had to make a choice. Which way will we go? Maybe a decision about where we'll attend college. We have acceptances from the green school and from the maize and blue school, and we have to decide which one of those we're going to choose. Now, despite the color schemes, you will get a great education at either school. And we can have a discussion about which is better or not, or whether the red school comes into play, right? But it's not a choice where you say, oh my goodness, if I'd only gone here, I would have been better off. Or maybe a job. Two opportunities come along. Which one will I take, right? Both of them are good. Neither one is terrible, but when you choose one, you sort of set your direction. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to live? You buy a house here, you buy a house there. Those kind of choices are reasonably there. But what's interesting about the, 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 the path, the moment, is that you don't really know how the outcome is going to be. What will happen because you did this, made this decision? The future is still sort of unknown. You don't know what happens when the road turns down a ways or when something comes along because of this decision as opposed to that one, right? When I chose to go to St. Louis for seminary instead of staying in Philadelphia, in, uh, in the East Coast, you know, either Gettysburg or Philly, those other seminaries, you know, I, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know because of that choice, I'd go to this internship site, I'd meet this woman and have this family and end up here. But at that point, I thought it was the right choice to make. I, that was my choice, my fork in the road and it leads to this place. What's interesting is there's no value judgment there. But we find in the text today this sort of two-path approach. And, and unlike Frost and the ponderer standing there in the woods, we are told clearly about the distinction between path A 
and path B. There is no denying that one path is good and one path is bad. The one path is a blessed path. The other path is a cursed path. The one path is a path where the trees grow and there's all kinds of green and the other path is arid brush or leaves blown away. The one leads to rejoicing and the one doesn't. Set clearly in front of us by the authors of scripture to say the godly path is path A. If you trust God's word, if you live according to God's commandment, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go this path and it'll be good for you. The outcome will be fine. Everything will be right. Blessings will follow. And if you decide to go the other one, the path of what I call self-assurance, it calls it the human path, but, but I think it's more than that. I think it's about will you trust yourself and the values of this age, then, you know, you're taking a chance. Doesn't turn out so good. Disaster follows. Death and destruction. So you so would think, right? Knowing that this is a good path and this is a bad path, when you're standing at that moment, you'd pick path A. But Jeremiah says, the heart is devious above all else. And the heart, that devious character inside of us, that that, that nudger says to you, I think you can do it on your own. I don't think you need God. I think you can figure it out. In, in fact, you're going to be better off initially if you go your own way. And so human beings, since the beginning, have decided that they'd rather go path B because they want to do it on their own. They want to do it by themselves. They want to know that they're capable or able. They don't need God. But it happens again and again and again. No matter how many folks decide to go this way and how often we discover that there is disaster ahead, people choose it anyway. And you think, well, it's all over because two roads diverged in the wood and you can't get from one to the other. But the weird part is that God seems to have them running much more closely to each other. And there was one who is the way who decided to jump the way and became accursed among those who had been cursed and took upon himself the curse which belonged to those who had chosen not to trust God. And in so doing, broke the path between the two and opened the possibility to move from one to the other. That the choice made at the beginning does not ultimately have to affect the outcome because Jesus who is the way came over to the other side destroyed its power by receiving the curse that should have been ours and freeing us to jump ship change roads go another way and Paul says we can trust that promise because the one who did that is the very one whom God raised from the dead. And in raising Christ Jesus from the dead, not only does God destroy the power of death, but also affirms the life of Jesus, the way of righteousness as the way that we should walk. 
two roads. And we'll pick badly and we'll pick well at times. But even when we're going down the wrong way, the right way is walking by our side, pulling us back to go in his way and experience the delight that comes in living with him. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those who trust in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. Bless your church, universal, and all who strive to build the kingdom of God. We pray especially for Trinity and Battle Creek with Reverend Churston Sullivan, for Karen Anderson, who's working as a healthcare professional in Santiago, Chile, and for the Church in of Emmanuel in Ludington with Reverend Domingo Schreiber. We also pray today for Messiah members Lauren and Austin Fenske and Braylon, Brad and Molly Fogg, Dale and Donna Foote, Richard and Peggy Fork, Nicole. Nicole Fritz and Grace Lynn, God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern that they lead with humility, inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet, sustain truth-tellers and social movements 
that challenge society to become more honest and just. And bless the church council that serves Messiah Lutheran Church. God of grace. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer, especially those on our Messiah prayer list and all that we hold in our hearts. God of grace. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships and be a comfort to this congregation as we face the upcoming pastoral transition. God of grace. God is raised from the dead and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace. Sure. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So you can sit for a moment. So last week we had our congregation's annual meeting and we elected some people, actually we elected all the people back to church council and then we'll install the rest. So the following people have been elected by this congregation positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism we were welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. So at this service, we have Kathy Kiffmiller, come on up, Terry Lutz, Gretchen Walraven, Don Gillard, and Amy Ayler. Come on up here. <laughs> Show your face, they want to, you know, these are the people you call when you're mad at me. Oh, that's... Just, Gretchen. Just Gretchen, call Gretchen, right. <laughs> a reading from 1 Corinthians. The variety of gifts, but the same spirit, and their varieties of services, but the same Lord. The varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. Teach is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. I'm going to come down here and look at you guys. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You're to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. You can sit down. Well, you can't sit down because everybody's standing anyway. All right. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, 
Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God to be for the people of God. Take and eat them in remembrance that Christ died for your sins. Come now, the table is prepared.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. My soul cries out. 